morning, everyone. I'm Andre Moro at our LPB studios in Baton Rouge, and welcome to our special coverage of the Celebration of Life Interfaith Service for Louisiana's 54th Governor, Kathleen Babineau Blanco. This service at St. Joseph Cathedral in Baton Rouge will be followed by a procession to the state capitol and the public visitation there in the rotunda where Governor Blanco will lie in state. This morning begins the first of three days of services for the late governor, today in Baton Rouge and tomorrow and Saturday in Lafayette. Burial is Saturday in Lafayette. Blanco passed away this past Sunday after a years-long battle with cancer, ocular melanoma. Governor Blanco was 76. Joining me in our studios is LPB President Beth Courtney and the recently named director of the Kathleen Babineau Blanco Policy Center at UL Lafayette, Stephen Barnes. Welcome to both of you. Thanks so much for being here for this important day in Louisiana it history. It it really, it is. is. <laughs> Beth, longtime friend of Governor Blanco. Uh, Blanco in 2015 named uh, Louisiana LPB legend. She was indeed. And uh, <laughs> you. Uh, more than possibly anyone else know that she had so many causes, so many platforms, mm -hmm. but it was the people of Louisiana that she put first. Well, Andre, you know, she was a woman of uncommon grace and determination. I had the pleasure of knowing her for much of her public career, and I've been reflecting on the moments that stand out for me, and quite simply, she had a joyous spirit, and I think that will be reflected in the celebration today. I love to hear her laugh. Her daughter, Monique, called in the past few weeks to tell me that her mother was failing, and we shared a chuckle about how Kathleen in her final days was still organizing and planning everything. <laughs> and that's what she did. A, a mother who had uh, a large family, and we're gonna see them all, I think they probably have, you know, 500 relatives, yes. cousins, <laughs> everyone coming in. You know, and I had really the privilege to be her friend, but also, to observe Kathleen in both the good and bad times. You know, she was shy as a legislator. I remember going to the mic was kind of um, a big thing for her when she was first elected. And there were so few women in the legislature at that time that really uh, she was not the standout person at that point. Mm -hmm. She was dedicated to education even then, but she was quite shy. You know, I, I would say that um, one of my most interesting things when I was reflecting all these good times and bad times was that she uh, was uh, the public service commissioner. And I always, we, we laughed about it later on and said, gosh, technology is changing. But she embraced it, even if she didn't fully understand it, that we <laughs> both it talked yes. about it. You know, we said, She's the one who managed to put together something called the Louisiana Optical Network, which is fiber all across the state of Louisiana connecting the major research universities. And that's what we're connecting on today, along with satellite because of Kathleen Blanco. So I'm gonna share some other remembrances, yes. but I know we want to talk about today's service. It's certainly an interfaith one with music from- Music from across. the Southern University Choir, from the St. Aloysius Church of Baton Rouge Choir. Yes. Um, several speakers including Governor Edwards uh, will be speaking and some of the past governors will be in attendance. Uh, it's expected Governor Bobby Jindal will be uh, here in Baton Rouge for this service mm -hmm. and also uh, former Governor Edwin Edwards. I just saw uh, former Senator John Bro walk into the um, cathedral just moments ago and so a large crowd will be gathered and um, we will hear some reflections and um, just beginning this celebration of her life. Yeah. Uh, the Late Reverend Billy Graham said that the greatest legacy that one can pass on to one's children uh, is the legacy of character and faith. And Stephen, new director of the new and to be built still, mm -hmm. a policy center uh, that will bear her name at UL Lafayette, the Kathleen Babineau Blanco Public Policy Center. Um, one might say that she governed the state of Louisiana, um, but in the foremost of her governance was character and faith being her legacy. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, it, you know, I'm, I'm new in the role, but but over the last, you know, six months have, have spent a lot of time preparing for my new position and, and talking about the new Kathleen Babineau Blanco Public Policy Center with a number of, of, of folks that I've gotten to know across Louisiana in my 10 years uh, working here professionally. And, and one of the things that really just impressed me is the resounding positive feedback you know, hearing people so excited about 
um, this as something to be named after Governor Blanco. Uh, and, and I think as people reflect on her legacy, just hearing from so many people, um, such, such a high degree of respect uh, for her. Well, looking forward, this will be the place, this will be the touchstone that people will remember her by generations from now. This will be the place. Well, I, you know, uh, th uh, having talked with her about this public policy mm -hmm. center, I know yeah. she spent a lot of time reflecting on her time in public service and, and progress we've made in Louisiana, but remaining challenges that we're facing. Um, and so this was very important to her to have something. She, she thought it was critical to have a place where we could really do in-depth research uh, on, on the pressing policy issues facing our state but also to make sure that we're working hard to share those findings with the general public and, and bringing those findings to the policymakers so we can really have an informed debate. Right. Certainly, if you look at national media reports and they will say she was the Katrina governor, that will be what will be written about her. And she was uh, so much more than mm -hmm. all of that. And she was thrust into such a large um, package uh, of information uh, about Katrina is out there. But I think people don't truly understand all of the things that were her basic desires and education meant so much to her. And uh, as we, we're looking at the cathedral maybe in just a moment, and I think the young people that... We're that hearing the song, You Are My <laughs> you Sunshine, are my sunshine. Mm -hmm. one of the state The St. Aloysius songs. School uh, Choir. I remember when Kathleen was first inaugurated, they, um, she wanted to make sure that there was a children's celebration. And she had children all over at her inauguration, Andre. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Stephen and, and Beth, Governor Blanco was the eldest of seven children. She and her husband, a 55 years Raymond coach, they had six children themselves. Here's a look back at the life, the legacy of Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco. On the morning of January 12, 2004, Kathleen Babineau Blanco was sworn in as the 54th governor of Louisiana, becoming the first woman governor in state history and only the 25th woman governor ever to serve in the United States. It was a picture-perfect morning that marked the culmination of one of the most improbable journeys in Louisiana's rich political history. A journey that began 62 years earlier in the small Acadiana settlement of Koto. I guess one thing that many of us, especially women, are afraid to go into something that is new and strange is because we have never done it before. And I guess one simple fact hit me that these people had never done this before either and that everybody has a beginning and that I could have a beginning too. You have to respect the individuals and you have to understand where they're coming from with their own politics and you have to know that this reflects Louisiana and we need to bring the best out of each other, not the worst. Leadership is important in Louisiana and that is the foundation of my candidacy. Since you were the, the, the front runner in, in the primary, is this your race to lose quickly? It's my race to win, I hope. All right, thank Kathleen you very much. Blanco, thank you very much for being with us. Let us never forget that if we put the people first, all of our other priorities will inevitably fall into place. We've been constantly looking ahead, trying to make life better in Louisiana, and everything we do has to do with the quality of life, because Louisiana is a worthwhile experience for our visitors and for our people. Thank you for making it the great place it really is. This is what I really like, a fishing lieutenant governor. She duck hunts, she fishes. What more could you ask for? And she's going to go try to catch a few of these redfish. You got one? I, I think I got one. But when I do look back at the last four years, I have to say that it was the best of times and it was the worst of times for us as a family. Because we lost our youngest child, Ben. But I have to say a special thanks for, to, to everyone out in Louisiana who lifted us in prayer, who carried us through this most difficult time. And Ben's spirit is always present. And he always walks with us wherever we walk. And we talk. And I know that 
He simply leads the way for all of us, and that dying is a part of living. But we could not have made it without the prayers and the support of so many thousands of people out in Louisiana. We need to look forward and go to the future because each of us has a responsibility to make this life as we find it, as good a place as we can make it. Thank you. Education is economic development, and education reform goes hand in hand with building our economic success. Our teachers are demanding more from our students because the jobs of tomorrow will demand no less. As a former classroom teacher and the mother of six, I'll make education my first priority, and I'll put our tax dollars back into the classrooms of accountable schools filled with certified teachers. It's time to put the children first. Je, Kathleen Babineau Blanco. Que gouverneur, que gouverneur, de mon mieux, de mon mieux, je le jure, je le jure devant Dieu, devant Dieu. Que <laughs> It was in Iberia Parish that as a young girl, I dreamed of the possibilities and opportunities that my mother and her mother would never have imagined. Today marks the first time that an honor such as this has been earned by a daughter, a wife, a mother, a grandmother. This journey is perhaps one of the most challenging in our history. And to meet these challenges, I first humbly ask you for your prayers. The combined devastation can best be described as a catastrophe of biblical proportions. Imagine if your state's largest city was underwater for a month. It's almost unthinkable. There is no greater issue facing Louisiana as we speak than the funding for levees and for housing. We have too much work to do. It takes too much energy to do what we really have to do to save lives. And we could not use our energy to fight a political war, a political battle. We just couldn't. And I said, we're going to trust. We're going to just simply trust in the Lord and history will prove that everything we did was done for the benefit of our citizens. We have Louisiana people saving Louisiana people. And he said, if you can get that dome up for the first regular game, I will work with Tom Benson. Together, we will make sure that the Saints will be there. Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco leaves behind a rich legacy steeped in Louisiana culture. Her commitment to education and her beliefs in the people of Louisiana never wavered. Governor Blanco's impact on the state of Louisiana will be felt for generations to come. But perhaps most importantly, the earth is a better place because Kathleen Babineau Blanco walked it because there was truly enough room in it for everyone she ever met. The life, the legacy of Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco, the only woman to ever be governor of Louisiana so far. I guess we could say Beth, right? <laughs> yes, and, uh, they, one would people, optimistically yeah, think that. <laughs> people have been uh, gathering at St. Joseph Cathedral in Baton Rouge um, as services will begin uh, shortly uh, for the governor, and um, it seems like it's going to be a full house there. It's a full day of activities, first full three days of activities in Baton Rouge and Lafayette honoring uh, her life. According to their plans and the program that was passed mm -hmm. out, the family is now gathering in the back, and when we say the family, the family arrived it's on extensive, buses. extensive, right. It's extensive, <laughs> yes. And, uh, we have been seeing down front on one side of the cathedral, we've seen many former 
legislators and current legislators there, uh, the Speaker of the House, uh, the President of the Senate, and um, we have seen uh, many faces from perhaps her past administration who were involved in it. The voice on that video you just heard, of course, was Donna Bazile. I w so I recognize, recognizable, huh? Recognize yeah. that. And uh, all of those pictures uh, remind us of a time that was so difficult for Kathleen. But looking back on the time around Katrina, you sense her, her determination to do the right thing. And truly, uh, her decision not to run for re-election may be a political reality, but also one in which she was free to do what she thought was the best thing for the people of Louisiana. Right, which again is what she mm -hmm. put first, uh, the people of Louisiana. Stephen, you had a chance to visit with her many times as uh, uh, in the past year and in the past several months. Um, and what's your takeaway as you, as you reflect on Governor Blanco? Well, I, you know, it's clear that she has put a lot of thought to, to her time in office, uh, to Katrina and, mm -hmm. and Rita. Um, and, and I think in the same way she has reflected on that and, and as time has passed, has a better appreciation for the enormity of the event. I think we've seen that unfold publicly as well. Um, but uh, one, one thing that I think is really striking was her, you know, her decision to just really um, open up that period of time in our state's history and, and for the benefit of the public here and everywhere to, to learn as much as we can from that. So you'll have all the documents That's that, right. at the center. And truly, it's a time when it was an overwhelming crisis in which the city, the state, and the country, frankly, was not prepared. Um, it was uh, an overwhelming event. And to see all those documents will be awfully important, I think. That's right. That, that uh, archive of about 90 boxes of material from her time in office uh, really was the, the starting point for, for really envisioning and building out this public policy center. So we will maintain that archive and in the coming months we'll be working to, to cultivate right. that and, and prepare it for uh, people to, to come in and, and dig into. Yeah, I visited with her um, 11 months ago now mm -hmm. at her home mm -hmm. and uh, this was shortly after the announcement uh, of the public policy center at ULF yet. And she was telling me that, um, you know, uh, from one administration to another, there's not always um, the day-to-day -day, uh, papers and, and events mm -hmm. that actually happened. It's not always documented, for one thing. Hers was, very organized. Uh, but what she wanted to be able to leave was the transparency, she said, uh, of the day-to-day mm -hmm. events of her being in office. One of the things I hope is that we're listening to music here at the cathedral. I loved her time as lieutenant governor. Don't lose sight of that. <laughs> it was the most wonderful time in the state when we were celebrating uh, uh, the French heritage. And that's when we started to start calling her Kathleen Babineau Blanco. Yes. Right. Because she wanted to honor that Cajun heritage and she, what a great representative she was of the state. The Congre Mondial and Franco Fett. I remember she loved music, she loved dance, she loved all of the arts, and one of the things she wanted to make sure is that all the people of the state of Louisiana were involved in Franco Fett. When I was reflecting on that, I was remembering that we did a production of Evangeline, the musical about the wonderful, you know, the oak and mm -hmm, Longfellow's mm -hmm. poem, Evangeline, and she said, Beth, we need to do that concert in Shreveport. They need to feel a part of it. Uh, I, was, yes. I was thinking, yes, they do. <laughs> and so we all went up there and did the Evangeline the Musical from the theater, the Strand Theater there in Shreveport, Louisiana, and they did feel a part of it. So I think it was a joyous time being Lieutenant Governor, and I always thought, wow, she was perfect. <laughs> yes, she was perfect. And as Lieutenant Governor, tourism just took off. It soared. And, and some of the iconic images that you remember of uh, the crawfish representation of Louisiana and even the signature of how Louisiana was spelled on the logos is something you remember. Um, that's what she did. That's mm -hmm. some of the things she did. She did commercials in French and in English mm -hmm. and uh, to embrace everyone. But she would tell you that her French wasn't that good. <laughs> she she yeah. would say that she was struggling. Uh, we're seeing shots of uh, uh, Garrett Graves, the congressman there. there, and Bobby Jindal and Supriya Jindal there in uh, the cathedral. Um, I think a number of dignitaries are going to be there in the front rows. The family is assembling in the back right now to escort the body in. I think her 
grandchildren are going to be the pallbearers uh, today and in this interfaith service. Yeah, and according to the program, uh, bagpipes will begin to play in about four minutes at 9.55 a.m. Um, and then her body will be escorted uh, through the cathedral front doors and then to the front of the cathedral here in Baton Rouge. Uh, as you see, some of the choir, some of the people, uh, beautiful cathedral built in 1853 and uh, has been preserved and redone and added on to and kept in great condition, pristine condition. The organist there at the cathedral passed away not too long ago suddenly and I'm just looking at it remembering him, a great friend of all of us, Robbie Gerard, and I'm looking at that. and. Um, Indeed, this interfaith service uh, is a wonderful thing, looking at the people involved in it, because again, as we look at the front rows, I see John Alario, yep. who's announced his retirement. He is not running for the House of Representatives, which he could do. We have term limits. He's been both. I remember him arriving in 19, I think, 70. Yeah, it's true. And, and as he told us, if uh, anyone has any questions, though, he'll be a phone call away. <laughs> well, and I see a lot of uh, Lafayette representatives there. Uh, Representative Landry, who was head of the state police for a period of time. Um, I saw Russell Mosley and his wife Erin. She has worked in the administration. He, of course, is the great Wait, wait, the grandson of, of uh, great-grandson of Huey Long. Okay. You know, with the illness that uh, she endured, um, there was a great deal of time to prepare uh, for the inevitable. She, um, mm -hmm. she fought it and valiantly. She had uh, good days, she had bad days. Um, she had probably more good days than uh, she expected. Um, mm -hmm. Until the past month or so, she went into hospice and uh, was cared for uh, until her death. I see Mitch Landrew there with his wife and Secretary of State, uh, current Secretary of State. We are in um, the state capital of Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and you see people from all around the state. Of course, we'll be going to her home parish later uh, this weekend for a mass. And uh, the public will have an opportunity to visit at both at the state capitol in Baton Rouge today, uh, as we, we will go there later uh, live to see the 21-gun salute. Um, her body will be lying in state. Uh, till 6 p.m. Yeah, from 1 o'clock to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. at the rotunda of the state capitol for public visitation. That's in Baton Rouge. And then uh, we'll be moved to Lafayette tomorrow um, to St. John the Cathedral there. And um, it will, her body will lie in state there from uh, noon until 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, and then continue on Saturday morning for two and a half about hours before um, the Christian burial mass begins and then a private burial will follow. We're talking about this long illness that she suffered and uh, she had such grace in, in addressing that time. She wanted to make you feel good when you talked to her about how she was doing. And here we see um, the hearse pulling up and uh, I think sure people will be gathering. It is a warm, hot, I guess we could say, day in Baton Rouge. But one thing so far, um, no rain. It's very sunny, as you can see, as the hearse carrying the body of Governor Blanco is arriving outside the cathedral. One of the things I noticed is that there were so many people involved in trying to make this be a very special three-day celebration of her life. We would go to meetings and there, everyone would wanted to be involved. Uh, uh, and I don't know that you see that always in, in political figures. Um, there was uh, a large gathering of people who were trying to make this event happen. Well, that the outpouring of, uh, of right. thoughts 
Right. Um, how, how, what's your reaction to that, that that we've seen this week? Well, it was interesting because some of the people knew her well and some of the people didn't. <laughs> That's what I was thinking when <laughs> I saw it. Uh, those who knew her very well, and but everybody was thinking wonderful things ab about her. This is not a time to say what you would have done differently. This is not an election campaign. This is looking back at life. But there are lessons she wants us to learn, I would think. As you were saying. That's right. That's right. And I think, uh, you know, uh, th there's a lot to be learned about how we responded to and recovered from the, the massive storms. But there's a lot of other important work that she did for the state, uh, you know, thinking about her work in the context of education, you know, fighting uh, poverty and trying to grow the state's economy. Uh, as well as criminal justice reform and governmental ethics. Stephen, for a moment, we're looking at the uh, outside St. Joseph's Cathedral in Baton Rouge, and these are her grandchildren, the grandchildren of Governor Green Blanco, uh, gathered uh, at the rear of the hearse, uh, and they will escort um, her body into the church. Now, Governor John Bell Edwards will be one of the primary speakers today, probably the primary speaker. Um, but a host of uh, Catholic leaders will be on hand, of course. As well as uh, Kim Hunter-Reed, who is the current head of the Board of Regents, who was a deputy chief of staff during Kathleen Blanco's administration. And she's been very instrumental in helping plan these three days. She will offer some reflections as well, and certainly indicating, um, once again, that commitment to education. of Governor Blanco from outside St. Joseph Cathedral to inside where the services will take place. And then following this service, a procession to the state capitol where her body will lie in state until 6 p.m. this afternoon. Good morning. Please join with us in singing our entrance hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Please join in singing, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Good morning, everyone, and you are joining us for the live services of Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco. This is at St. Joseph Cathedral, live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, for the interfaith services being held in honor of the governor. And this at St. Joseph Cathedral in Baton Rouge. It's the first of three days of activities and events honoring 
the late governor. We go back and join them. Looking on the, the live services for Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco, the interfaith service at St. Joseph Cathedral in Baton Rouge. The family is moving into the pews there on the left side. Many legislators, former colleagues, uh, former governors, uh, and senators on the right side of the cathedral in Baton Rouge. Andre Morrow, along with Beth Courtney and Stephen Barnes, here uh, discussing the day's activities and the ceremonies for Governor Blanco. In just a moment, we'll be welcomed by the Most Reverend Gregory Michael Amon, the Archbishop of New Orleans, who will um, provide greetings. And then I was recognizing a number of the ministers who were coming down the aisle, everyone from uh, a rabbi, good friend of ours, to uh, someone who will be uh, uh, I think about six different ministers will be participating in this interfaith service, something that she thought long and hard about, I am sure. And you see them there uh, lined at the front, uh, Archbishop Gregory Amon of New Orleans at the centerpiece. And there's her husband of 55 years, Coach Raymond, on the right side of your screen and Governor John Bell Edwards and Donna Edwards on the other side of the aisle. Please be seated. My sisters and brothers in the Lord, it is my privilege to welcome you to the Cathedral of St. Joseph as we receive today the beloved Daughter of God and the former Governor of our state. Kathleen Babineau Blanco. Her life with God through the church was always first in her heart. Today she returns to this cathedral which was her home parish while she governed the state through times of joy and peace and through turbulent times of hardship and challenge and Hurricane Katrina. Governor Blanco never gave in to desolation but rather renewed her spirit through her great trust in God's providence to make up for what was lacking in human power and easy answers. Today, we welcome Kathleen home again to this cathedral, very grateful for her service and her strength, which gave hope to the people of our state at times when hope was needed the most. And we come to bid our earthly farewell to her and to thank God for her life, her faith, her family, and the leadership she has provided. My friends, we also come together to offer condolences and prayers, especially to you, Coach, Kathleen's faithful and beloved husband. 
you stood by one another day in and day out. And to Kathleen's children, Carmen, Monique, Nicole, Raymond Jr., and Pilar, spouses and grandchildren, and in a very special way to Kathleen's mother, Lucille, and members of the Blanco family. We know that you come here today to this sacred place with broken hearts, and please know that we lift you to the Lord, that you will know his comfort and his peace. Even though Kathleen's death was expected, death is always a surprise. We're grateful to you as the Blanco family for the loving care that you have given to our sister throughout her life and especially during these last years as she prepared to go home to God and also to be joined again to her deceased son, Ben. To Governor and Mrs. Edwards, state and federal officials, as you served with Governor Blanco as a colleague and a partner in the important work of governance, we pray today that the blessings of your common work together will remain for you a blessed and lasting memory. And we pray that today we'll also urge you to continue, as you do, to do what is right, to love justice, to walk humbly with God, as Governor Blanco did. To all the members of the various religious communities, Christian churches, and other religions, with gratitude, we join together today in common prayer to the one God. And we pray, of course, first for Kathleen and also for our country and for our state. My sisters and brothers in the Lord, we pray with all of you. We pray for all of you who mourn. Lifting up our sister to the mercy and the love of God, which sustained her so deeply throughout her life. May Kathleen and all of you know the peace of God which is beyond our understanding. And may Kathleen find eternal life, yes, eternal life, with all the saints in glory. Please stand. Let us pray. God of endless ages, from one generation to the next, you have been our refuge and our strength. Before the mountains were born or the earth came to be, you are God. Have mercy now on your servant Kathleen, whose long life was spent in your service Give her a place in your kingdom where hope is firm for all who love and rest is sure for all who serve. We ask this, O God, in your name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Psalms, Psalm number 23, first in Hebrew and then the English. Adonai roi lo exar benot deshe yarbitseni almei menuchot yanahaleni. Nafshi yeshovev yancheni bemagle tzedek lema'an shemo. Gam kielech begeit salmavet loi rara ki atayim adi, 
Shiftacha u Mishan Techa Hema Yanachamuni Ta Arok Lefanai Shuchan Neged Sorai Dishanta Vashemen Roshi Kosi Rivaya Akto Vachesed Yirdafuni Koyame Chayai Vishavti Bevet Adonai Le Orech Yamim The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointeth my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A mother's love, devoted, protective, ever-present, ever-uplifting. It is nurturing and never-ending. Kathleen Babineau Blanco felt a mother's love from the woman who gave her life. She shared a mother's love with her children and her grandchildren and all of those who worked with her and for her. And she had a mother's love for her Louisiana. She celebrated our joy, cried when we hurt, dreamed big dreams, and worked tirelessly to improve our reality. Like the mother pelican on our state's flag, she was willing to sacrifice for her state. Today, we gather to celebrate her life. A wife, daughter, mother, grandmother, teacher, trailblazer. For the first time in the history of our state, Louisiana called on one of her daughters to lead and lead she did. I am honored to share the experience of so many in this cathedral today, having had the opportunity to work with and for Kathleen Babineau Blanco. During that experience, I learned a lot of things. I learned about Blanco values that run deep. I learned about Blanco time, which is more of a feeling than a number on a clock. <laughs> I learned about Blanco blue, which we wore proudly. And I learned about that Blanco force of nature we love called Coach. Kathleen was an advocate for education. She believed it was within her grasp to move people from poverty to prosperity through access to quality education, health care, and employment. For many of us, the last time we gathered in this cathedral together was a time of celebration to celebrate her inauguration, a new dawning. Today, we gather to celebrate a life well lived as her beautiful sun has set. It was a sun that provided light in good times and comfort and warmth in challenging times. She played the hand which she was dealt and often made the most of it. When she was criticized for having a heavy hand and negatively referred to as Queen Bee, she joyfully embraced that title, and off we went to buy Queen Bee jewelry. Persistent and persuasive, when she called in a staffer to talk, to chat, no matter how weary you were, she could get a yes out of you, even if you had practiced and were determined to say no. She believed in good, common-sense solutions. She was a proud, proud penny pincher, and she believed in facts and data and sound arguments and good policy. The kind of work that the policy center that bears her name at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette now carries the torch to advance. As a former teacher, she set out to improve our educational opportunity in our state. 
bringing higher education and teacher pay to new highs. She created Louisiana's need-based aid program because she believed that college was important and she said that education was poverty's mortal enemy. Kathleen gave a voice to those who were often not heard or considered or seen. With little consideration for political consequences because in her world, good politics was about what was good for her people. She was a servant leader in every way. In my heart, I always understood God was preparing me for unknown challenges, and of course, those challenges came, she said. God puts you where he wants you to be. Her faith is her legacy. It anchored her in times of storm with the death of her son, Ben, as she shouldered a state recovery from not one but two megastorms back to back, and it helped her to face her own mortality, which she did with grace and courage and a deep sense of peace. It was just like Kathleen to share her news of her illness in a way that rallied Louisiana, this time to prayer. She did not say in her letter to Louisiana, I'm in the fight for my life and I urgently need your prayers. No, her letter was first and foremost a thank you to the people of Louisiana. It was a testament to her belief in the power of prayer and a simple request. I would deeply appreciate it, she said, if you should see fit that you offer prayers on behalf of myself as well as all others fighting to survive life-threatening illnesses. Not a request solely about herself, not a letter written to seek sympathy, but a letter meant to lift the testimony of people and the power of prayer. When I visited her again last week, though she was weakened from her cancer fight, she smiled and opened her arms so that I could receive my last great big hug. She quizzed me about my daughter and my work, and of course I had to remind her that I was there to check on her and coach and her family, not to talk about me. But that was Kathleen, always interested in everyone who visited her. On August 18th, at 2.54 p.m., Louisiana's 54th governor was called home. She had hung in there to celebrate her 55th wedding anniversary with coach and his birthday. She had had an opportunity to spend special moments with her children, her family, and her vast array of friends. It is said that parents give us two things, roots and wings. Like a mighty oak, Kathleen has left us with deep roots, the kind that are so common in Louisiana. Roots that ground our work, anchor our moral compass, and tie us to a place that we are so proud to call home. She has also given us wings to soar to new heights, encouraging us to lift as we climb, calling us to be torchbearers for service, advocates for education, and champions for children. I am certain that Louisiana is a better place because Kathleen Babineau Blanco served and sacrificed and lived and loved. Thank you, Governor, for giving it your all. We love you. We miss you. May she rest in peace.
I will read to you from the Holy Word of God found in the Quran, the Holy Book of Muslims. Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Al-Rahman al-Rahim. Malaiki yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka na'astayin. Ihdina sarat al-Mustaqim. Sarat al-Adina and amta alayhim. Karil makutubi alayhim. Wala darling. Ameen. The English translation is, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Praise be to God, the cherisher, sustainer of all the worlds, most gracious, most merciful master of the day of judgment. Thee alone do we worship. Thee alone we ask for help. Show us the straight path, the path of those whom thou hast favored, not the path of those who earn thy anger, nor of those who go astray. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Then the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me? They also will answer, Lord, when did you see a hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you do not for the least of these, you do not do for me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Here ends the reading. The governance of power. Power is a woman who looks directly into the camera says a defining moment in her life is the loss of a son. Power is a woman 
who always writes her own script. Power is a woman who takes a 15-year turn to raise children, Corman, then Monique, Nicole, Ray, Pilar, and beloved Ben. Power is a woman who cares about the health of others first. Power is a woman who teaches and then teaches teachers. She teaches them to build schools first from the inside. Power is a woman who falls in love with the one Blanco she knows she'll spend the rest of her life with and does. Power is a woman fearless of foreign tongues and places and people. Power is a woman never hedging when it comes to her God, how she will walk with him and talk to him and rest in him. Power is a woman who can say, I am a powerful woman, and I don't say that because I was governor. She says, I'm not powerful because I wield power then or now, but because I claim power, and I claim that power to define my personal happiness. She says this to a group of students at the beginning of a new phase of their lives a last phase in hers. She says to them, I suggest you give yourself that gift too. All power comes from big-heartedness and a plan, from hope and faith. And she's saying to us today, give yourself that gift too. Distinguished guests, 
former Governor Jindal, most especially Mrs. Babineau, Coach, the entire Blanco family. Thank you for the honor of being able to celebrate and pay tribute to a great woman. Someone I was fortunate enough to know, to know well, to call a mentor and a friend. Two years before my election as governor in 2015, and long before many thought I could win, Governor Blanco invited our family to Lafayette to have supper so that my kids would hear from her children what to expect from life in the governor's mansion. And I don't share this with you to highlight the election or her clairvoyance. Rather, I share it with you to highlight her generous spirit. She personally spent time with each of our children. And Coach made a significant contribution too. He turned me on to a really good old fashioned that night. <laughs> that night she also spoke to me about the need to focus on the least fortunate and the most vulnerable in Louisiana. And we had the gospel reading from Matthew 25 just a moment ago. She didn't cite that passage, but I knew from the end of that conversation that that passage had greatly influenced her because she spoke about those people. She spoke about the least among us. Lord, when did I see you hungry? thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick, or in prison. And this deep and abiding love that she had for all of the people made her a special leader, authentic, consistent, and sincere. We all know that Kathleen Babineau Blanco was the first woman to hold the office of governor of Louisiana and she certainly will not be the last. Kathleen's faith, life experiences, and genuine concern for others allowed her to connect on a deeply personal level with nearly every person she met. And I suspect that every person here believes that Kathleen knew them and loved them individually. And you are all right, she did. She was a true Cajun, born in Iberia Parish. She was a mother who knew the great joy of raising six children. But at the same time, she was also a mother who knew the unimaginable heartbreak of losing a child. A devout Catholic, she leaned on her faith for guidance and for comfort. Like all of us, I suspect, she was the sum of her cumulative experiences, but she was also much more. She was a stay-at-home mom, a teacher, a public service commissioner, a lieutenant governor, and yes, she was the 54th governor of the great state of Louisiana. And she was a good and decent person who understood people because she understood life, its beauty, and its hardships. And as we all know, she led Louisiana through some of its darkest days. And as a believer in divine providence, she would tell you that she knew she was put in that position for a reason. And I believe that. I also believe that she was meant to be governor of this great state for many other reasons. There was one group who needed her passionate and compassionate leadership more than any other. Louisiana's children. Some might say that being a teacher or being a mother is what sparked her love of children. Certainly that is the case. But I know that her devotion to the well-being of the children of Louisiana ran much deeper. She saw every child as a child of God, as a brother or sister in Christ. And accordingly, she felt the responsibility to care for them, each of them, as if they were her own. And I think it's fitting that just before I got up to speak, the children's choir performed this little light of mine. 
because that is what she wanted for every child, for their light to shine into a brighter future, a future where the quality of their education did not depend upon the zip code that they lived in, a future where no parent needed to wonder how to pay for their child's doctor's visit, a future where a child, even from the most modest of means and the most challenging of circumstances, can grow up in a world filled with opportunity, including the opportunity to be governor. On July 2nd, Don and I attended a ceremony in Lafayette to name a section of U.S. Highway 90 the Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco Highway. It was certainly a fitting tribute, and it was a festive occasion. And she and Coach were so excited about that event. And a couple of weeks ago, I returned to Lafayette to see her at St. Joseph Hospice, and things were much different. But as soon as I approached her, she opened her eyes, looked right at me, and asked me if I had another highway to name for her. <laughs> she then smiled and she laughed. You know, in addition to her sense of humor and her contagious optimism, one of the things that I will cherish most about Kathleen is that she never stopped fighting for the people of this state. For example, she knew that their well-being is intrinsically tied to the vitality of critical institutions such as our universities and hospitals. So while literally fighting for her life, she, with Coach by her side, also fought to adequately fund the University of Louisiana at Lafayette and University Hospital in Lafayette and similar institutions all across the state of Louisiana when the fiscal cliff, when the fiscal cliff threatened their funding. Kathleen once said, my values, our values, aren't about pointing fingers. They're about offering a helping hand. That, I believe, is the very embodiment of what it means to be a true Louisianan, and she certainly was. Like you, I wish we could have had her sage counsel and loving generosity for many more years. I wish it for the state. I wish it for me, and I wish it for the incredible family that she and Coach created. But let's commit here and now to focus not on the void created by her passing, but to forever treasure the blessing that she was, and let's give thanks to God for the many beautiful ways she enriched our lives and our state. Perhaps the greatest gift any of us can ask for is to be able to say at the end of our days, as the powerful hymn goes, it is well, it is well, with my soul. Kathleen had that opportunity, and it was well. She found peace. And I hope and pray that part of her peace was knowing that she could count on us to continue her legacy of caring for the people of this beautiful state, that she so proudly served, and that she so dearly loved. So let's honor her by doing just that. God bless you. Let us turn to the Lord, whose providence holds in compassion our sister Kathleen. Let all of us here remember Kathleen with love and gratitude. We will pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
for the people of every land and nation who seek God with a sincere heart that they may find their heart's desire in peace and freedom, we pray to the Lord. For the people of the United States of America, by God's strength, may our nation remain faithful to the values of justice, freedom, integrity, and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. For all exiles and refugees, for those who come to this country seeking freedom and opportunity, for people of every culture, language, and way of life who call Louisiana home, we pray to the Lord. For the people of Louisiana, may we live on this grace land, faithful to our blessings and committed to the common good. We pray to the Lord. For the men and women who served with Governor Blanco on behalf of the citizens of this state, May they remain true to their calling to service with integrity and honor. We pray to the Lord. For a deeper spirit of reconciliation among people of different races and religions, for a unity of heart in addressing the intractable problems of our society, that all people may be lifted up by the hope of the world made new. We pray to the Lord. For, for all who are powerless and who live on the bed of pain, may their hope not be forgotten. We pray to the Lord. Lord on behalf of our evangelist, Kathleen Blanco, to the service men and women from the state of Louisiana who stand in defense of our country in places near and far away, for all of them who have given their lives so that others might live in freedom, for the generations who have lived in this state and who now sleep in eternity, we pray to the Lord. In peace and in silence, we offer to the God of us all our prayers of need. Gracious God, we are grateful for the long life of our sister, Kathleen Babineau Blanco, now caught up in your immense love. We thank you for her witness and service. She who was strong in faith, discerning in proclamation, courageous in witness, and persistent in good deeds. 
May she know the joy of seeing you face to face, O God, and live with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our recessional hymn. It can be found on page 650 in your red hymnal, Amazing Grace, page 650. We will be singing verses 1 and 5. You watch the services, the interfaith services at St. Joseph Cathedral in Baton Rouge for Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco, the 54th Governor of the State of Louisiana. 
I'm Andre Morrow along with Beth Courtney, LPB president, and Stephen Barnes, who is the director of the Babino Blanco, Kathleen Babino Blanco Policy Center at UL Lafayette. And you're watching now the procession out of the cathedral in Baton Rouge. What a moving service, Andre. It certainly reflected her strong faith. And I think everyone who spoke uh, spoke of her joy and uh, spirit uh, till the very end. And I am moving from all walks of life and uh, all sorts of, I was ticking off, I, I saw Catholics, uh, um, uh, rabbis, uh, but also Methodists, Episcopalian, we recognize ministers, didn't we? That's right, uh, Muslim. As, yes, absolutely. And one of the, I think, uh, common themes as we all come out into the sun though was that she was a loving mother a mother not only to her children but to all the children of Louisiana and the yeah. people of Louisiana. And to the state of Louisiana That's yes she, she loved Louisiana uh, Governor John Bell Edwards uh, the centerpiece of the speakers perhaps and and choked up uh, during his uh, discussion of her life and what she meant to him uh, you could tell there was a closeness a special closeness uh, that he felt I think what the governor said was that she connected uh, on a deeply personal level with many people and probably everyone out there who's watching this who had ever seen her, met her, uh, felt a very personal connection. I think it was her warmth that really was the preeminent characteristic uh, of uh, what we all saw in her as a woman and mother, grandmother, and, and governor. Among the speakers who gave readings uh, late in the program, we saw Gail Benson, mm -hmm. president of the New Orleans Saints, uh, and again, someone that Kathleen Blanco and the Saints organization kept close uh, watch over during her uh, reign as governorship. Governor? The ceremonies will continue later. Uh, we will be joining um, the procession as it goes up the steps of the state capitol, probably about 12.30, it's right? It's about 12.30, that's correct. Um, and she'll be brought to Lyon State in the rotunda of the uh, state capitol. And that will be until about uh, six o'clock today and then be transported to Lafayette tomorrow for services beginning there. Uh, Stephen, your thoughts on the service that we just saw? You know, I thought it was a, a wonderful uh, combination of, of talking about her faith, talking about her family and her commitment to, to her family, um, and, and really the way she approached the state of Louisiana as, as a broader family. Um, and I think that really drove a lot of her policy initiatives. Um, and, and I think, um, you know, that, that heart of really trying to help people, but understanding where they are and, and, and what it is that they need to get to the next level, um, I think is, is part of what made her policies resonate so well. And, and there was a focus on, uh, certainly focusing on the least fortunate and the most vulnerable of those in Louisiana mm -hmm. and the children of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. This was certainly an historic day. Uh, she was the first woman governor of the state of Louisiana, and I was just looking at a little note talking about personal things sh that she sent me uh, late in May, and uh, she just knew that we had been recording history, and we have a wonderful archives, and we'll be working with you and her center going forward, but she said, um, thank you for making all the films accessible to the people of Louisiana. History is well recorded for those who care to learn from it. Uh, affectionately and appreciatively Kathleen and I think that that's what we need to learn from history I think I think that's right and I think that you know that's something that we're going to be working very hard on at the Public Policy Center uh, is is you know making sure that we can 
you know, get gather that data, collect that information, do that research, but share that back with the public. Make sure that that we're learning from our history uh, and and continue moving forward. Is there a target date for the center to open? Roughly. Well, th this I think this whole year is going to be a growing process. So we are uh, operational now. You know, we're, we've already got some research projects that we've started working on. I'm working to hire some additional staff. Uh, we'll be getting some students involved in our work uh, as the semester begins, um, and, and it'll continue to grow from there. Well, I certainly see everyone gathering outside, and it's uh, uh, Republicans, Democrats, young, old. We, we saw uh, a wonderful celebration uh, here at the cathedral in Baton Rouge, and uh, I think it's very unusual to have uh, someone lying in state. If we, we always say the rotunda at the Capitol, but of course, it's not really the rotunda. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have a different kind of a Capitol. Yes, we do. Uh, but uh, I recall that uh, when Dave Treen passed away, we had a, a ceremony within uh, the cap state capitol. And uh, I was looking back and t thinking the numerous times we have had other former governors. We have some living governors with us still. Mm -hmm. I did not see Edwin Edwards here uh, today. Perhaps he's going to Lafayette. Um, also, um, Governor Buddy Romer is still with us, not in particularly good health, and certainly Governor Mike Foster, who is, um, uh, I, I think I've not seen him out a whole lot, but today was a day to focus on the legacy and celebrate the life of Kathleen Blanca. And there was certainly um, a great deal of celebration. There were tears, um, memories uh, to celebrate her life. And the services now move from uh, St. Joseph Cathedral to uh, the state capitol in Baton Rouge. Uh, we will return and be joined again for the services at about 12.30 today as uh, uh, there's a procession to the front steps of the Capitol and then into the rotunda, as we say, well, she will, will lie in state. Um, I want to thank you both for being with us. Beth, will continue our coverage yes. at 12.30. Stephen Saint, thanks so much. Uh, we'll be talking a lot to you. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you having in me the today. months to come. Absolutely. Thank you so much. look forward to it. For now, I'm Andre Morrow here at our LPB studios. Uh, we'll join our regular uh, programs in progress, and we'll see you again uh, this afternoon.